Mahalo and good morning, Destiny Christian Church. Welcome to the Polynesian Culture Center. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Well, it's great to see you guys. Are you happy to see me and the team and the servers of the house? Who's happy to see our pastors this morning? Most importantly, who is ready for God's word this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you can join us, please stand to your feet. And let's just open up in a quick prayer and give God some glory and just thank you for bringing us here today. Yes? Amen. Let's go before our Heavenly Father. Lord God, we come before you right now because we are ready, Lord. For whatever you have for us this morning, we are prepared, Father God. We stand and we stay shielded and armored up, Father God, for whatever you have to take us into, Father God. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together as a church family and to worship you and give you glory, Father God, because you deserve all the praise. We thank you, Father. We honor you today. Prepare our hearts and let us lift our voice and make the noise that we can give you all the worship that we can, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together this morning for our, for our God because he deserves all the praise. Hallelujah. High five your neighbor. Say good morning, neighbor. Welcome to Destiny Christian Church where we love to have fun. And we have a great time with the Holy Spirit, yes? Come on, put your hands together. Let's get into it. Hey, one more time. Say it.
one more time and say good morning. Yes, it's great to be in the house of God this morning because this is this is where the party at. This is where the party is at. Woo. Everybody inhale and exhale. If we look full, it's because we're full of the Holy Ghost. Ah, yes, we are. And maybe some donuts and you know whatever, but main thing we're filled with God's presence this morning. Amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time. We are ready to God. We are ready for God to just rain down His presence on this morning. Yes. See, this building, this room may feel like this, but with God's presence, there is no roof here blocking us. We need to make our our, our love for God break through the walls. Yes. Amen. Break through the roof. Break through the ceilings. There's so many people out there that need to know who he is. And this is our chance to just come to God at this point. In your own way. To have your own conversation with our Heavenly Father. That's the best thing ever. So don't worry about your neighbors next to you. Get into a place where it's just you and him. Can we all do that this morning? Can we just have that intimate moment just before?
as you remain in an attitude of worship, please have your seats. This being the first Sunday of the month, you know, here at Destiny Christian Church, we always celebrate corporately in communion the first Sunday of every month. However, we also encourage you, whenever you feel the need, whenever there is a time that you got to go before your Heavenly Father, do so in communion. You don't need a corporate setting to have a personal connection with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I love this time. I love communion. Because communion to me represents the goodness of the God that we serve. It shows just how much he loved us. It shows just how much he loved me. And so I take it personally when it comes to communion. I take it personally because if you listen, if you read God's word and truly listen and see all that he did. Isaiah 53. Pastor used it last week, but I like to read it every communion. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrow, acquainted with the deepest grief. We turn our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion and crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we can be whole. He was whipped so that we can be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. I encourage you, always, every day if you get a chance to, read Isaiah 53. It, sum of, it tells everything that Jesus did on our behalf. How much God loves us. Everything that he went through, we should endure that punishment. But God loved us so much that he made a way for us to be healed. And on the night before Jesus was betrayed, he took some bread. He broke it, gave thanks for it. He says, this represents my body. It's been beaten, battered, and bruised on your behalf. But every time that you partake of it, do so in remembrance of me. You may be sitting down here right now going through something in your body. I'm here to tell you by the blood of Jesus and the power of God, you can and will be healed. And then he later took a cup. He blessed that cup. He gave thanks for it. He says, this cup represents a new covenant. I'm glad of that new covenant because that new covenant covers all of us. It covers Jews and Gentiles alike. Those that have given their life to our Lord and Savior. He says it's a new covenant. Whenever you partake so, do so in remembrance of me. There is healing in the blood of Jesus. There is restoration in the blood of Jesus. There is renewal in the blood of Jesus. I promise you that no matter what circumstance or situation you may be facing, if you put it in the blood of Jesus at the foot of the cross, my Lord and Savior will change your life. So when you partake of these elements, remember the goodness of the God that we serve. No matter what situation you're facing right now, know that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Let's partake of the elements. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you that we get to come up in here, Father God, and celebrate communion as a corporate body. Communion represents the love that you have for each and every last one of us. That you bankrupt heaven so that we can be free. And so, Father, we thank you for your love. 
we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, that only you could pay this price and do what need to be done. So, Father, as we honor you, as we walk out life with you, we also humbly say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Please continue to worship with us. Healing right now taking place in this room. Restored hearts and restored lives are taking place in this room right now, Father. We lay it all on we trust this room.
trust you this morning. With everything we have, we place it in your hands, Father God. Your healing taking place right now, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are ready for your mighty word, Father God. Open our hearts. Open our ears. Let us see exactly what you want us to see and hear, Father God. Let your holy presence cover this entire room. And we all say amen and amen and amen. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Come on, Destiny family. Put your hands together one more time. As we welcome Pastor Carlos. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together for our worship team. Yeah. I know we can do better than that. Let's put our hands together. And while you're at it, let's find about five or ten people. High five them and tell them it's great to be in God's house today. Amen. I would ask that you please remain standing for the reading of God's word. We're in Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 to 35, and it reads, Now learn a lesson from, this, from the fig tree. When the branches bud and its leaves begin to spout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, you will see all of these things. You can know his return is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth. The generation, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my word will never disappear. This is the reading of God's word. Please have your seats. Father, I just thank you for this time, moment, and opportunity. I thank you, Lord. This is all about you and not about me. Fill this empty vessel. In the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus, we all say amen. How many people enjoy pastor's message from last week? That's what I'm talking about. You got to get fired up by the message, right? And he was in Matthew chapter 24 as well. Verses 29 and 31 with a title, From Tribulation to Triumph, the King Return. He used a quote, The purpose of prophecy is not to entertain the curious, but to encourage the consecrated. It's not to entertain the curious but to encourage the consecrated. He had four points, the scene, the sun, the sorrow, the signal. And we have been talking about, we started the chapter off with the disciples of Jesus asking them that question. When is the second coming? And what are the signs. And so Jesus started laying out the signs of things that was happening. Pastor covered these in his message. And there's a lot of things that's going to go on. A lot of things that transpire. And over the years in life, people have told us we don't talk religion, we don't talk politics. We don't talk religion. We don't talk politics. We don't talk religion. You know, they were setting us up for failure. They were setting us up to be dumb. The Bible is pretty clear. You will know the truth. And it is the truth that sets you free. And when we don't talk about things, then we don't get a clear understanding of what God's word says, what it means, and how we should live. And when we live in according to God's word, Politics don't bother us. The culture and the community that we're living in don't really bother us. Why? Because I'm living according to God's word. So we have those conversations. 
I'm glad in this church we don't bypass revelation. I want to know what it's all about. And I ain't got to be afraid as long as I'm living according to God's word. Now, if you're afraid, then check yourself. But if you're not, if you're good, then to know what's going to happen, to know how it's going to happen, you know what I look at it as? Encouragement for me to tell all of my family and friends how to live a life victorious for God because when these things come, you're protected, you're safe, you're good. And pastor taught us the scene, the sun. There's going to be sorrows. Remember we talked about them trumpets, them bows. I was looking at a video the other day of some marching bands, and they started blowing the trumpets, and I started crying. I was like, oh, Jesus, I missed it. <laughs> but I only know that because you read God's word. He concluded with, but the day of the Lord will come as unexpected as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with terrible noises. And the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. The earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives should we live? And he tagged on to that Ephesians 4.1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling in which you are called. See, when we walk in with God, when we walk in for God, when we obedient to God's word, it doesn't matter what's happening. We know who we are. We know whose we are. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And the fiery furnace? I'm sorry, in this church, you might not rec recognize it that way. Shat, right, me, shat, and a bad Negro? Yeah, that one. You remember that one? Yeah, see? Got some cards now. You know how they said it? They looked around, and it was like, hey, our God can save us. So we're not concerned about it. But even if he don't, we're good. See, that's the life that you and I need to walk out each and every day. We need to be so bold and so comfortable with our walk with God that we know that God can save us from any situation and any circumstance. But even if he doesn't, that means he got better plans. He got better plans, right? We need to understand that. And if we don't understand that, then we walk around like timid Christians. If you know anything about Pastor Carlos, he don't like timid Christians. Mm, mm, mm. So the title of this message, Are You Ready for Jesus? Because Pastor already said, he can come like a thief in the night. So are you ready for Jesus? See, our getting ready for Jesus is happening right now. We're always in that process of being ready for Jesus. If you say, somebody tell you, oh, you know, on the 6th of November, Jesus is coming. So I'll wait until the 5th and I'll start getting there. If he come on the 4th, you done. <laughs> so we get ready all the time, right? All the time. And Jesus was teaching us the signs because the disciples wanted to know what are signs? Signs on a road map are indicators which points us to the direction of our destination or what's to be. This is the what to be. The disciples ask about the signs indicating the second coming. Now let's help us out because we can ignore signs. Really, right? You know them signs that say 55 here in Hawaii? And we go flying down the road at about 85 on a dark day. And then we get mad when we get, see them lights behind us like they're just messing with me. No, fool, you speeding. You ignored the signs. 
We also know here in Hawaii, if we get ready to get on the road and it's clear, school is out. That's an automatic that school is out. I can zip in and zip out anywhere I need to go. But we get up and hit the road. <laughs> school is in. Traffic backed up. Right? There are signs that point to seasons. We need to understand those seasons. There was a time that you can go into the store at a certain time of the year around this time. Nice music on. Christmas decorations all over the place. All of the employees got on a little Christmas hat. Everybody's in the jolly spirit. You knew it was Christmas time. You know what was coming up. You go in the store now, it's June, and they got Christmas decorations up, and everybody mad. Why are you here today? Because we're ignoring the signs. We just done blurred them all up. But Jesus says, you and I need to know the signs. Four observations from this text. Starting off with the first one, the parable. Verse 32. Now listen, now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When the branches bud and its leaves begin to spout, you know that summer is near. My wife and I had lived in a lot of places, right? And you go to those places, they got all four seasons. Sometimes, especially in the wintertime, the fall, the, the trees are bare, the grass is brown, the flowers are wildered. But then springtime comes, and you begin to see the change and the transformation. And then summertime comes, and everything is nice and green. The trees are blossoming out with leaves all nice and pretty. The flowers are up there, and you know that it's summertime. And Jesus says, now learn a lesson. It's ironic that he used that word, learn. See, learning something means that I'm hearing it, I'm listening to it, and I'm applying it to my everyday life. Sometimes we hear things, but it ain't what we want to hear. So we ignore it and ignore it and then we got to learn again and we're ignoring it because we're really not learning we're not learning it's changing our habit it's changing how we live it's changing how we think it's changing how we behave when you read god's word and apply it to your life you know somebody who's been learning from god's word because you can see it in their life. But if you grew up with a person and you know the life that you and them live and you see them 20 years later and they tell you, I'm a Christian, but you're looking at their life and nothing changed from when you and them was running life. You know one thing, that fool didn't learn nothing. Learning for us is important. I personally believe when we stop learning, we stop living. We have to learn. Jesus used a parable. That made me start asking all kinds of questions. Why did Jesus use parables when speaking to his disciples? And we didn't went over this over and over again. Jesus used parables to hide the mystery of the kingdom from the world. All while explaining it and making it clear for those whose hearts belongs to him. Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 13. Jesus' disciples asked him that question. He was talking about it before. His disciples came and asked, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? He replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have, will be taken away from them. 
That is why I use parables. For they look, but they do not see. They hear, but they do, don't really listen or understand. We have to learn. And Jesus started this off by telling the disciples, you need to learn a lesson from the fig tree. So in that environment, because Jesus had used the fig tree once before in Matthew 21. And when he passed by the fig tree, he was hungry. And the fig tree had no fruit. And when it was supposed to produce fruit. You don't, you don't not feed a man when he's hungry. That ain't good. I can tell you that now. It ain't good. And so because the tree that was supposed to produce fruit was barren, it was cussed. Here's the deal. You and I as children of the most high God, we should be producing fruit. People should be able to come to us and get fed the word of God so that they can learn and that they can grow. So what kind of tree are we? Are we like the, fruit, the, the fig tree who was barren at the time? Not producing fruit? Or can we feed people with God's word? That's what we need to get to. But this time he used the fig tree. Because in that environment, they had fig trees growing all over the place. So Jesus used what was there to tell his story. And he wanted to make it simple, yet straightforward. See, too often... We try to make things complicated and confuse people or we don't want to talk straight and lead them down a path they don't need to be. Jesus made this simple and straightforward. He said, learn a lesson from the fig tree. And he says, when you see it and it's full, it's swollen, the leaves are tender, the branches are tender. We are nearing summertime. which means that we're nearing harvest. And we need to acknowledge the seasons in life that we're in. And when we learn to do those things, we have great success. But when we ignore those seasons, those seasons then failure happens. Anybody ever went somewhere, you leave in Hawaii. We, we got that bad here in Hawaii. You go somewhere, leave in Hawaii in your shorts and shirt. <laughs> then you get up to Washington State or something like that and it's freezing because you fail to look at that area and know the season that they were in right we gotta know the seasons we gotta know the season so Jesus used that he used that And it's, under, it's, it's important that we understand God's word and how we use it. James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25, it says, Don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the law that sets you free, and if you do what it says to do and don't forget what you have heard, then God will bless you for doing it. We learn God's word. We apply God's word. We live out God's word each and every day. And if God's word make us say, ouch, it's not because the word is bad. It's because we're in violation of God's word. When you fix that, it won't make you say, ouch, it's going to make you feel good. And we got to always remember that. We learn and we continue to learn and we're always learning. Don't come say I'm not coming to church because they're talking about the end times right now and I, I'm living today's life and I don't want to know that and I, I, I feel bad. No, 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 no. You need to come. You need to hear. You need to learn. You might be outside of God's will, but if you learn something new and you change your habit and you begin to learn and you begin to grow, you're good. And that's what we need to remember. God's word is not always to make you feel good. But if you apply to your life, I promise you, it will make you do good. So 
So we know when the fig tree, Jesus was saying, when the fig tree, when you see that, that means harvest is coming. We learned that also. When, when God was talking about the wheat and the terror. And he said, they're going to grow together. We snobbish Christian folk, we want to stay out of the world. We don't want to interact with the world, right? We want to be in our own little bubble. But he says, no, they got to grow together. And when the time comes, when the time comes, then the angel will come and he will bundle up the weeds and he will set them afire. That fire is judgment. So you need to make up in your mind, am I going to grow as a weed or am I going to grow as a wheat? And I say grow. I ain't say smoke. If I'm going to grow as a weed, because you know we use this cannabis stuff for our own goods now, right? Am I going to grow as a weed or I'm going to be God's wheat, right? Because judgment's going to come. And just because we listen to God's word, if we're not applying it to our lives, we're wasting our time, right? We are wasting our time. That learn, we are always learning. Paul said, I have learned. We are always learning. And when you learn better, you do better. How do I know if I'm learning? If my life is changing, then I'm learning. If it's not changing, then I'm just somebody just gum flapping before me. They sound like Charlie Brown teacher. I ain't got time to listen to them. That takes us to the next point. The principle, verse 33. In the same way, when you see all these things, you know his return is very near, right at the door. Yay, I stand at the door and knock. How many of us going to open that door? What did Jesus mean when you see all of these things? Jesus was referring to everything he had spoke about from the beginning of this chapter to now. About the birth pains, about the abomination of desolation, the great tribulation. You know, we talk about them birth pains. And sometimes... You know, we like to read in our own times, and we, we, we think that, okay, this happened, so this got to be it. No, this happened, no, it's got to be it. Uh, this happened, it's got No, all of these things are going to be happening. And he used the birth pains, and that was a great one for me. Because when a woman is pregnant, and she gets into that ninth month, she start having these things called contractions, right? And, and so you, you want to break the speed limit because you got to take it to the hospital. You're supposed to be doing 55, but if you're me, you're doing 105. Then you're going down there, and the doctor, she gets up in there, and the doctor says, it's not time. What do you mean it ain't time, man? The contractions are not close enough. Because when the contractions get closer and the baby sets place, then it's harvest time. But until then, you take her back home and let her keep yelling at you because you caused this to begin with, and we'll deal with it when it comes, right? I mean, that's the way it happens, right? And so, so he, he, he's saying that, you know, you got to understand these signs. You got to know. And when you see all of these things, it's an indication that we get in there. But see, here's the good thing. I'm glad that I know this. But if you remember when Ace was preaching and he, 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 he preached about that first flight, you want to be on that first flight. In this church, we believe in the rapture. We won't be here for all this crazy stuff that happened. You want to know because you want to help your family and friends so that they don't be on it. So I look at it like this. When that first flight happened, Pastor Carlos is going to be on that first flight. I don't care if I'm first class or economy. I can be in the wheel well in the chicken coop. I'm happy I'm on that first flight. Right? I'm on that first flight. I'm traveling. I'm good. So when they come, I'm not worried about it. If you see my clothes there but not me, you'd be like, he made it. <laughs> Pastor made the flight. That takes me to the third one. The process. Life is all about one big process. And if you notice, Pastor Carlos loved the process. Pastor Vanessa and I have been going through this process thing for quite some time. And I must tell you that I have learn 
the process because I have failed miserably ignoring the process. And so I have a great appreciation for the process. That's how things are to happen. And we try to rush things to be what we want them to be, when we want them to be, but we can't rush the timing of God. God is God and he makes things happen when he is ready to make things happen. And the only thing you and I need to do is trust the process. And not try to rush through things. In the military, I used to always teach my soldiers, you don't ever rush to failure. And we try to rush into things. But Jesus said, no, this is going to be a process. You're going to see these things happen. Right? And if you see these things happen, when you see these things happen, it's only the beginning. Only the beginning? Good Jesus. <laughs> Woo! You said only the beginning. Right? But I started thinking about that process. And people will call my wife and I, you know, they wanted to talk. Because they're going through some stuff. So they will come over. And we share stories with them and help them through the process. We share some of our stories. They leave the house all the time, the first time, saying, how in the world did that guy become a pastor? He got some serious issues. That is a good God because he saved them. And so then they want to meet and they want to meet and they want to meet and they want to meet. Because they always want to talk the process. But they just want to talk the process. See, the process is like God's word. You don't just talk the process. You have to work out the process every single day. You have to live God's word out every single day. It's not something you just talk about. It's not something you just hear. It's something that you learn. It's something that you use. It's something that transforms you. It changes your life. And when they come back and they be like, I know it's been six months, Pastor, since we've been here. But we're dealing with the same issue. And I'm looking like that going to hurt because you didn't learn the process. Because you wanted to ignore the process, you sitting right back here on my couch having this same conversation. Jesus is telling us there's a process in how things happen. Don't read this and think that it's going to happen overnight. Because it's not. But you need to know the signs. Understand the signs of which we're in. So he says, I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. That led me to another question. What generation is Jesus talking to? Some believe that was meant for the disciples. Uh-uh. Not them. They had their own things that transpired, but it wasn't for them. Some believe that he was referring to when the desolation of the temple happened in 70 AD. But the people that came and the people that was causing all of that trouble and the destruction, it wasn't from God. It was the Romans at that time. So, nope, they don't include that one. Some people believe that it was the Jewish nation. Mm -mm. They're still around. They became a state. They got to work through their own issues. And sometimes we think because they're Jewish people, they got it all together. They're more of a secular nation than America. They got their own set of issues they got to work through. So, nope, he wasn't talking about them. Some believe there's the church. Well, if you believe in the rapture, you know that only people from the church that's going to be here is them that ain't learned and listen. That's the only one going to be here because the church is going to be raptured out. If you think about it, remember we went to Genesis and they had Noah? And God told Noah to build an ark because the flood was going to come? And most believe that Noah built that ark for 75 years. He was just nailing on nobody knows. Everybody else was having fun. Noah just said, nobody knows. And then when the flood came, because it wasn't no announcement, they had no flag. Whoop, whoop, flood coming, warning. No, it happened. Because Noah did what God says. He did exactly what God said. And he put his family on the boat. He got on the boat. The signs came. And the boat was floating. Oh, let's think of Lot. Remember that guy? Oh, yeah. Abraham always had trouble with Lot. I would have punched Lot in the face if it was me. But anyhow, you know, Lot was up in Sodom and Gomorrah acting fool. 
And the two angels went. And he told Lot, hey, get your family. And y'all leave here. Don't look back. Leave. Because we're going to deal with this place. So Lot was leaving. But the wife. <laughs> boom, she saw <laughs> Here's the problem that you and I have. God brings us through something. God teaches us something. He carries us away, and we're supposed to be moving forward and always moving forward, but we got a tendency to want to look back. You learn from the mistakes that you made, but you grow in God each and every single day. Your past is behind you, but your future and your God is in front of you. So it ain't the church if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now, if you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing, you might want to listen to this message and all the other ones, too. But <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Whatever generation is here at the time that these things happened, that seven-year period, whatever generation is here, they're going to see it all. I'm telling you, they're going to see it all. Bro, man, don't worry, buddy. I'm walking with God. I have made up my mind. No matter what's going on, I'm walking with God. I can be in the wheel well, in the chicken coop, but I know I'm riding with Jesus, so I'm good because what's going to happen ain't good. So we need to understand that. It's those that's going to be here at that time. And then the promise. I love a promise from God. See, when you get a promise from God, that's totally different. Man make you a promise, and it depends on how he feel the next day, whether or not that promise was real or not. But when God says, when God promises something, you can bet your life on it. It's going to happen. 35. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. He says all of this stuff. It's going to go away. All of it. But my word is my word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He says my word will always be here. So what does that mean? When I learn God's word. When I apply God's word. When I live out God's word all the time. That is my key to success. That is the secret to the kingdom. Learning and applying and living God's word. It don't go away. Things go away but not the word of God. And we got to understand that. Romans 12, 2. I love this one. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn. There goes that word again. There go learn. Then you will learn. Learn changes behavior. Learn changes the way we think. Learn changes habits. Learn make you grow with God. Learn make you look like God. You know how you hanging out with a person for so long and people begin to see the resemblance between you and that person? That's the same way it is when you're hanging out with God. If you're walking out life with God and people begin to see the resemblance and they be like, oh, that boy look like God. Then they look at the other one, oh, Jesus, you need help. But that one look like God. Right? Change your behavior. Because he promised you that if you read his word, apply his word, I am God. The word is me. I will never go away. Neither will my word. And neither will you if you stay true to me. Jesus answered the second question concerning the signs of when he was coming. Or when his coming will be. The next few verses... He will answer the first question of when. As we are nearing the end of chapter 24, here we see Jesus lay out a simple yet straightforward truth. Simple yet straightforward truth concerning signs leading to the second coming. He starts verse 32 encouraging his disciples then and us to learn. Jesus concludes verse 35, informing that his word will never disappear. And so, if we believe the word of God, 
then we believe that this is going to happen. And I echo what Pastor Joe said last week. If we can't get in our head that Genesis 1-1 is real, is true, then nothing else in the Bible is going to ever make any sense. And if you say you're walking with God and you get into some tough times and you can't find your way through it, I encourage you, go back to Genesis 1-1 and you will know the power and the presence of your God and always live that way and then start to get it right. If you got Genesis 1 right, you'll get everything else right. But if you don't, then anything that comes around can turn out to be your God. And that's not what we want. We want to live a victorious life with God. Amen? So my question I asked myself in the process of all of this, I said, am I living a life that is pleasing to God? I encourage you to ask yourself that question. And if you're not right with God, that's okay. Repent, seek forgiveness, and get right with God. Amen? Father, I just thank you for this time and opportunity. I thank you, Lord, that we learn to live a life that is pleasing to you. Bless everybody underneath the sound of my voice. In the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus, we all say. Put your hands together, Mr. Process himself, Pastor Carlos. For those of you who know, every time I'm up here, I'm up here to talk about what's in your pocket that you think is yours that is not yours to begin with. It is your tithes and offering. Now, if you want to give, you can download the app. Text DGCLY to 77977, and the ushers are passing the buckets around so you don't miss your opportunity to give. Learning and living. Woo. And you got to action. Action has to go with that as well. It's not just learn. You have to act on what you've learned on God's word so that way fruits will begin to show. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 it says you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response of pressure. I don't know about you but I grew up in church thinking that I had to give because to give. Every time I gave, I was thinking, I'm out of obedience to my parents, out of obedience to everybody else. But it was never out of the heart. What this is saying is, if your heart ain't in it, don't do it. However, mm. if your heart isn't in it, then double check your heart. That means something isn't growing in you that is holding you back from giving into God's kingdom. And it's not just your tithes. It's not just your offering. It's your gifts, your talents. Give it to the church. To one another, you have to give what God has given you so that we are blessed by what you everybody has a gift. I am encouraged, give that to God, and God promises He will bless you. You just have to trust Him, give Watch what He does in your life, and He will do a lot. Turn to your neighbor and say, Give to God, Father God. We thank you for such an awesome work. Father, we ask that you bless those who decide today Father, only you can anoint and only you can bless them. So I ask, Father God, that you let that blessing grow upon them, upon their families, so that way when it flows to everyone else, they will only see how great you are in their life. And they give you the honor that you deserve. And we pray. Everybody say, put it in of a pastor Joe. Thank you, Ace. You know what? Let's give Ace a big round of applause. Every week he comes up to receive the offering. And you know, after a while when you have to come up and receive an offering and he's only got a couple minutes to do it, um, it takes a lot of creativity to, to be uh, delivering a couple minutes message every week to encourage our giving. So Again, thank you, Ace. Thank you so much for being so faithful in receiving the offering. I don't, I don't know about you, but that word was a powerful word. Anybody receive something from that message? Now let's, let's give Pastor Carlos a big round of applause. Come on. You know, I know for some of you who don't know Pastor Carlos, for the, he's only been preaching the last several years. And, and I, I remember, you know, because every time we would go out and eat, and we were at a restaurant, or we were at their house, when, when Pastor Carlos tells a story, the whole restaurant hears it. And I just knew that there was a teaching call on his life, 
and to be able to just watch him. How many of you guys have enjoyed Pastor Carlos' uh, messages? Just see how he's developed. And man, what a powerful word. I, I, I want to encourage you to continue to listen to the podcast. You know, one, one of the ways that I learned uh, when I was a young Christian is that whatever the pastor would teach, I would, and back then we had cassette tapes, you know, and I would grab all the cassette tapes I could get and just learn it and learn it. And, and the more I poured into my spirit, the more I could see God begin to transform my life. You know, the key word today for me was learn. Sometimes we can hear things, but you don't learn. Right? Just because you're hearing something, if you're hearing a sermon, doesn't mean there's transformation that's happening or there's fruit that is coming forth. And so I love the fact that he really emphasized that word, learn, because that's what that's what being a disciple is all about. How many of you want to be a disciple? I don't want to just be a believer or a Christian. I want to be a disciple of Christ. And a disciple is one that has been transformed where you can see the transformation in their lives. Amen, somebody. So I, I, I want to give you a few announcements, and then I want to recognize a group of people that are, are here today. Um, first of all, remember this Friday we have Next Gen, our youth ministry meeting up here, and I really appreciate Anna and Fred, and when you get a chance, if your young people are going to Next Gen, please thank Anna and Fred and the team that's, that's there. They do such an awesome job. They try to go to all the kids' games. I know that they, they went to my, my oldest grandson's game last yesterday, and I so appreciate them doing that. Um, also, November 22nd, somebody say 22nd. We got our winter ball, and please don't miss this. I'm going to punch you in the face if you miss this event, okay? Because you need to be at this event. This is just something about us Christians gathering and family gathering together, we're gonna have, we're gonna party hardy. We're gonna have some fun, all right, and and, and get not have a hangover the next day. So so I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, also, um, the following day, November twenty third, we're gonna be we're gonna be feeding um, the less fortunate. We're gonna be out there at the Barber's Point again. And so please, we do this every year. We want to encourage you guys to bring family and friends, and let's let's be a blessing to our community. Somebody say amen. Uh, finally, I want to I want to say thank you. Uh, where's Sister Mary here? Well, she's, she's a servant. But I know there's a group of you that uh, have joined us today in our service, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for evangelizing our streets. Thank you for having the heart to reach out to our people, and I love that that you would take the time in your trips to actually come to Hawaii. Now, I, I know you didn't have to pray about coming to Hawaii. <laughs> but instead of coming to Hawaii and then just chilling at the beach, uh, the fact that you went on the streets and reached out to our people, thank you for that. We really appreciate that. Come on, let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you for that. And through Mary, because she posts like 100 posts every day on Facebook, we were able to watch some of the journey that you guys have been on um, recently in New Zealand. And um, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Why don't you stand to your feet today? Let's give them another big round of applause again. Thank you. Father, we are so grateful for your word. Everything will pass away. In fact, your word tells us that everything that we can see with our eyes is temporary. But the things that we, we cannot see is eternal. And we're so grateful for the promise of your word. It gives us peace. It gives us joy. It gives us security. And I thank you so much, Lord God, that now that we have learned your word, we want to go and apply it. Father, I know the Holy Spirit is directing some of us and has told us certain things and given us assignments that we need to work on. And Lord, I pray, Father, that we will continue to apply the process of transformation in our lives. And I thank you, Lord God, that you would continue to cause us to become more and more like you. And so, Lord, we love you. We pray for the peace of God. We pray for the 
protection of God over our families as we release them. We pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against them will prosper and every assignment of darkness that is aimed towards their demise is canceled in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you that you would continue to bless, continue to strengthen them. And I thank you, Lord God, that you continue to bless their families. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you guys next week.